The phrase trial of the century has been thrown around a lot. There was the Fatty Arbuckle trial in 1921, the Scopes Monkey trial in 1925, the Lindbergh baby kidnapping trial in 1935, and more recently, we all remember the O.J. Simpson trial in 1995. But there has never been a trial like the one shaping up for Donald Trump. Because in the history of this country, we have never had a president of the United States try to stay in office by subverting democracy and literally trying to overturn the will of the people. I'm joined now by NBC News presidential historian and friend of the show, Michael Bechtschloss. It, it is remarkable, Michael, um, that we are here. But I want to just zero you in on one specific aspect of it. And it sure. is the Shakespearean tale of the man about which Trump said, per the indictment, you're too honest, Mike Pence. From right. the indictment, from the indictment, the vice president was told, you need to overturn the election. The vice president responded that he thought there was no constitutional basis for such authority and that it was improper. In response, Donald Trump said to him, you're too honest. He was the most sycophantic vice president probably in American history. He then becomes doormat. the potential victim, a doormat. But he was going to be hung that day. What do you make of the fact that he will be the star witness in this trial? Well, uh, you know, you live along, long enough, you get to see everything. You know, Mike <laughs> Pence is a hero. I don't think he is. No. He's doing the absolute minimum. He's showing a pulse. He's not lying under oath, I think. But is that what we want? Is that our, our test of our leadership in this country? You're absolutely right. And by the way, thank you for asking me tonight. What a night to get to talk together, given ah. the history that's being made as we speak. Indeed. But, you know, Pence, for four years, saw his boss, and not only his boss, whom he treated like his, his ruler, he treated him like a supplicant, nothing that says a vice president has to be that servile. You remember he used to talk about our great President Trump and his broad shoulders and <laughs> all the rest of this, it used to make me sick. But here we are, and now Mike Pence, in the end, uh, may be the one who's giving information that may at least contribute to a verdict against Donald Trump in this trial. Uh, you're too honest, Mike Pence was told by Donald Trump. Is that something that George Washington said to someone or <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, Dwight Eisenhower? Eisenhower never said it to his vice president because that was Richard Nixon and he wasn't. <laughs> It is it is remarkable. So there are so many things that are interesting. But what, the, the defenses of Donald Trump have been varied. But I want to play for you one of the specific ones, because they're previewing what their defenses are. This is John Laro. Um, and it is an interesting history-based defense. Here he is. Uh, there is something wrong with sending no, fake no, electors no, no, trying these, to go beyond no. and around the law. These weren't fake the electors. These were alternate electors, which John Kennedy did in 1960. It was an exact protocol that was followed previously. Different situation. Different situation, Michael. How oh, so? Oh, please. <laughs> uh, you're really provoking me tonight, Joy, and I'm going to rise to the bait. Uh, this so-called alternate electors scheme that John Kennedy supposedly followed according to this ridiculous lawyer who does not deserve to be a lawyer if that's the kind of precedent he cites. You know what that precedent was? In no. 1960, John Kennedy got 303 electoral votes. A lot of them were from Southern states. A lot of Southerners were worried, quite rightly, that if Kennedy got to be president, he would do everything he could to, maybe slowly, but he would do everything he could to fight racial segregation, which he did with the Civil Rights Act in 1963. So what did these Southern electors and their Ku Klux Klan backers and advisors, and they really were, what did they suggest? They said to Southern electors for, who were supposed to be voting for Kennedy, instead, you shouldn't vote for Kennedy. You should threaten to vote for Harry Byrd, the white supremacist senator from Virginia, and tell Kennedy that unless he promises no desegregation, no action for civil rights, we will tell these Southern electors to vote for Harry Byrd. You know, that's like Jesse James or Jack the Ripper. So this lawyer is saying, it's okay for us to do this because Jesse James did it or Jack the Ripper did it. That's how far we've come. So you want to call that a historical precedent? It is, but it's a pre precedent of corruption and evil and racism. Unreal. Okay. Oh, uh, exit question. In your view, as a presidential historian, should this trial be televised? 
Of course it should, because we're living in a country, you're the last person on earth that needs to be told this, but since you've honored me with a question, I'll respect you with, a, with, a, with <laughs> an answer, which is that uh, in this country, there are all sorts of myths and conspiracy yes. theories and crazy non-facts being spread around. What better way to combat, and I, all, I, I can almost hear it being woven right now, Donald Trump is being given an unfair trial. He's being mistreated. This is a miscarriage of justice. Well, if we saw this trial on television every single day as a primary historical source, it would be very hard for those lies to move very far. If there's ever a time for television in a federal courtroom, this is it, I believe. I, I wish there had been television to be able to have the Scopes monkey trial, uh, you know, uh, on uh, televised. And if there was ever a trial that needs to have no filter of people like right. me telling people what happened, it is this one. It is so Let good to have a historian. see it with their own eyes and ears and, and we, hear with their ears. We love having a historian friend. Everyone should have a historian friend, and I do. And I appreciate you so much, Michael Betchlaw. I love having an anchor friend, especially a brilliant one. Thank you, Joy. Th thank you so much.